This, this is the future of 3D printing. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. I'm Frank, and today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing and building and talking about the Fuku's and talking about the Fuku's, the Fuku's, the Fuku's, the Fuku's, the Fuku's. So I, I get now we're trying to be all edgy and trendy with uh, uh, cool names, but can, can we can we spell it like we say it? Apparently it's pronounced focus, and I'm going to butcher it this entire video, so um, not my fault. Odin 5 F3. Now, I just said that this is the future of 3D printing, and I'm gonna actually stand by that. And I know that's a bold statement, but this little printer right here is hopefully about to drive a big change in consumer and hobby level 3D printing. I love this thing. Fuku's claims it's a 99% pre-assembled, ready-to-go, foldable 3D printer, and that's not that outlandish for them to say. But we're not here to talk about a box, let's talk about the printer. And we're done. That's it. That's how quick this printer assembles. Now, disclaimer, I have opened this printer before already. I've already tested it out. I've already put it through some trial and error. And I've gone and modified the way it comes out of the box. But it's only gonna take you a couple extra minutes based on what I just did to build this printer once you get the hang of it. Now, it does come with this sleeve that goes in between the printer that holds your tool accessory box and your cables. What I've gone and done is taken out the only two wrenches you need, the two little Allen key wrenches, stuck them into the foam, and then the four screws that you need to put into the side of this printer, I push them into the foam. So when I pull this out, everything I need to build this printer is already sitting right there as a little tool tray, and you saw how quick and easy that was to do. Now, I had already filmed two build videos for this. The first one, I lost all the footage to, and the second one, I kind of talked more about the assembly, and I had it running in the background, and the audio was awful, so I just want to redo this. But even after that video, and pumping out even more prints, I wanted to talk about the entire printer as a whole, and there's really not much to it. It works. They included very easy to understand instructions and there's already a couple cool Reddit forums and a lot of YouTube videos more talking about the assembly of this, but for about a $300, $350 price tag, getting a beautifully silent printer, dual Z access, a direct drive, foldability, and a nice touch screen, you can't really go wrong with something like this. And I already talked about a couple of the, the features and specs of it. It's the size of an Ender 3, 235 or 230 by 230 by 250 usually, depending on if you modify the profile and how close you get to the edges of the bed. If you're using Cura or Simplify 3D, you can definitely play with the parameters a little bit. I was just using a stock Ender 3 profile. I don't think there's a profile more in Cura that's been modified and messed with and improved upon than a simple Creality Ender 3 profile. So I loaded that in. It was very simple to do. That was the profile I used and everything was printing fine. We're going to talk about the Ender 3 real quick because the Ender 3 is probably the most recommended beginner hobby level cheap 3D printer. You can get it for about 160. You get the Voxel Lab Aquila for about 160, 170. There's really cheap printers about half the price of this thing. However, both of those printers are going to require a little bit of a learning curve. You're going to have to assemble much more of the printer. We already know the parts and bits of that are going to fail over time and you're going to need to upgrade things. They're great if you really want to get your feet wet into this hobby and learn about 3D printing. However, a printer like this is the opposite end of that spectrum. If you just want a printer out of box, build it in a couple minutes, and you want it to just print, I think this is that printer. You are going to pay a little bit more for it, like I said, about 300 and up, but for what you get, the simplicity, the assembly, it's built really, really nicely. It's a sturdy printer, even for having just those four bolts holding it together. Comes with a really nice textured ultra base glass bed. I already talked about the silent steppers. It does have a direct drive system and it uses a rib ribbon cable system, very similar to the artillery printers. Um, I, I still haven't had any issues with it. It seems to work just fine. But in case you ever do have any issues with it, Fuku's also gives you a good amount of spare parts. They give you a bundle of extra ribbon cable. They give you two extra nozzles. They give you all the tools you need. They give you nozzle cleaners and they give you a really big wrench. I still haven't figured out what it's for. What do you go to? Look, look at the size of this thing. And in terms of out of box calibration, I don't think I have ever to this day gotten a printer to print at a better quality right out of, out of the box. I broke Pikachu's tail. Then I did with this printer, I pumped out every single thing that was on the SD card, sliced my first little bit of G code, 
and then printed an entire Iron Man helmet over about seven days on this printer and it never missed a beat. Now I know everybody wants that printer you could walk into, hit print and walk away with, but eh, even some printers you get a little iffy with that. When I tell you that's exactly what I was doing with this printer, I'm not joking. I would come into the room, take off one print, find the G-code, the printer's already cooled down. I didn't even clean the bed off. I would find the next G-code in the line of the pre um, the pre-assembled models of the pre-loaded G-code, hit print, walk away, come back in a few hours, remove the next model, rinse and repeat. I didn't have a single failed print on this printer once I leveled it. The user interface is super easy to understand. I don't think you guys are going to have any problem navigating the, uh, you know, moving the gantry and loading the filament and doing all of that. It's very, very user friendly. This is what I was getting right off the bed with a stock Ender 3 profile. I made, again, I made sure everything was nice and tight on the printer before I started printing. This wasn't set at some super high print quality. This is just standard quality, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. And not bad. But I can also confirm thermal runaway works and power recovery works because I definitely did start a print in here during one of my original videos, unplug it, walk into the other room, carrying it and shaking it and moving it around, plugging it back in, hitting print resume, and it carried away. I believe it was Pikachu. Maybe it was Pikachu. I do want to talk about the two cons about this printer that I just think it's not really even a con, it's something I think they can add to it in the future. You have to put in two screws to hold the gantry up. Eh, that kind of stinks, whatever. Well, I guess four in this case. But it'd be really cool if that was some type of quick release pin system that you didn't even need to use screws. You fold the printer down, pop a pin in, fold the printer up, pop two pins in, and it holds the printer folded. I think that would be awesome. That'd make it even more ready to go out of the box. And then maybe a way to fold back the filament holder, a quicker way to lock it in. This way you don't even need any tools to build this printer. They're so close to that. And I think they can do it. And you know what? Honestly, somebody could probably model or design that or modify it. But I don't think it would be that hard for them to try to incorporate into the F4 if they ever want to release that. This is proof you don't need to be some giant head of the you know business 3D printing mongol to put out a good quality printer that they clearly are indeed and tested before they released. This would probably be something good to grab for a kid, grab for a teenager who does just want a 3D printer on their desk to print small stuff for school projects, for STEAM projects. This would probably even be good for a school or a classroom that wants to take off, just a, you know, doesn't want to take up too much desk space and wants it over in the corner for the occasional print. This is it. And thank you again, Fukus, for sending me this. Um, I know this review took a little bit longer than you probably wanted, but I'm glad I took longer on it. It really let me get to test this printer out and see its full capabilities and try to find a failure point. I really haven't found one yet, so uh, good job, and yeah, thank you. I'd really like to know down in the comments below if you guys have this printer, if you know it's definitely um, starting to make its rounds in the community, and if you guys are having problems with it, please let me know. Maybe there's some critical, crazy oversight I missed. And of course, as always, thank you so much guys for watching this video and subscribing to the channel and supporting me. I really, really greatly appreciate it. I hope you found this video informative and maybe you are now looking at the Fukus as a viable printer to start your 3D printing journey or you just want to add it to your arsenal. So thank you so much for watching and you guys have a good day. If you guys buy this printer for just one reason, it's the fact that it comes preloaded with a Shia LaBeouf bust. This right here makes it worth it alone. Just do it!